Are you looking for a free low-code app builder? Let's discover AppSmith, a free open-source low-code platform for building powerful applications. Connect your data source from any database or REST GraphQL API, drag components with the UI builder to create pages, and bind easily the logic between the two with a mix of simple no-code controls and JavaScript for specific needs. Before exploring AppSmith and discovering its features, let's see the different options to start using it. You can use AppSmith's free cloud version with an unlimited number of users. If you prefer to deploy it on your server, you can self-host it by following one of their installation guides. Or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self-hosted version on the cloud provider of your choice or your server while we take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To start using AppSmith on our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Then deploy my first service. In the search bar, search for AppSmith. Then click on select, choose between the different cloud providers, the last option is your own server, adjust your region and service plan, then click on next. Then the final settings, choose your level of support, I will keep the free included one, and once you are ready, hit the create service button. Once your instance is created, you will receive this email. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on the administration panel on Elestio. Click here to copy the password to your clipboard and follow the admin UI link to go to your AppSmith instance. Type your email and paste the password, then sign in. You arrive on the dashboard in the admins apps workspace that is created automatically. Admin is our username and this is our apps. There is one first application when we create it. But instead of using this example, we will create a new application. We have the choice between application, it will create a new application from scratch, or you can choose between the different templates. There are not a lot of templates available, maybe a dozen, but it covers a large panel of different use cases. Feel free to use the one that is the closest to what you want to build. It's always easier than starting from scratch. And for this video, we will use the KYC dashboard. Click on the plus. We arrive on the amazing AppSmith App Builder. It can be intimidating because there are multiple options on all sides, but together we'll see the main parts and you will see it's not that complicated. Honestly, it's quite pretty user-friendly. So currently we are in the UI panel inside the editor. So we see a lot of inputs we can drag and drop on our page, but if we click on an item still on the left, you will see all the components that are currently on my page. So if I click here, for example, just focus on the left for the moment, you can see this is this item. It is a text. It belongs to this container. And if you scroll, you see everything that compose our page. Then you have the JS panel. Currently, it contains only one file, the utils. This is a JS file that contains functions that are used inside our project. And then you have queries that includes all the different data connectors. You have the logo showing you that currently this one is coming from a Postgre database. But one project can connect to multiple types of database. Or data can also come from an API. But we will come back to queries and JS later. Let's go back to the UI. Currently, we are on the dashboard page. But before looking at how it works, let's create a new page. Click on the plus button, create new page with a new blank page. Let's say we want to rename it, go on it, rename. Let's say we want a home page before the dashboard. And we also want to set it as the home page. So now you have the house icon before this page, which makes it a true home page. Perfect. So we have that empty area here to create our page. And on the left, in the UI section, you have all the different type of elements to create your page structure. You can add inputs, buttons, select, display some data with charts, tables or media. And even you can use an audio recorder or a camera. For this video, we'll keep it very simple. So let's drag and drop some text. 
here you can see that the sizing of the element is done and you have those dots to act a bit like a grid. Let's put our item on the top left. And if we want to edit our text, it's not by double clicking here because the text is set on the right panel with text, hello, and you can see there is this inline way to add some data inside our component. We see admin, but what it is displaying is our AppSmith username, or if we don't have one, it will display our email. We want to keep it simple. Let's just say welcome to our home page. On the left, if you want to keep things organized, you can rename it. Rename main title. If you want to add a subtext, just drag another text drag and drop it and resize it where you want it to be. And let's edit the content of this text. What do you want to do? But the text is as big as the title. This is not what we want. So to change it, we can go into style. Currently the font size is M. So let's switch to S. So it's a bit smaller. You can also adjust the font family. We will keep the default one. You can adjust the color to make it a bit lighter. And the text is currently in bold. Let's disable it to have a nice subtitle. Okay, so now on our homepage, we will want to add a button. Where is it? Here. Let's drag and drop it to give the users some actions they can perform. We will want two buttons. So let's drag a second one. We'll make it the same size and just below the other one. The first one, the label will be hello. On all the components, there are a lot of actions you can bind without doing any code on your components. So for example, we have on click. Let's hit the plus button. You have a list of different things you can do. You can, for example, execute one of your query or a JS function. But in our case, we will just want to display hello. So we'll use an alert. We say hello world and type either an error or info, but we want, we want to display success. And then when you do this, you can add some callbacks on success or on failure, depending on the type of things you are running and then perform other actions. But in our case, we don't have it. Before trying the action, let's add a tooltip. Display a hello message. And still in the builder, we can try it. So if we hover our button, you see the nice tooltip, display a hello message. And then if we click, we have the alert with the success. Because this is the home page, we want to redirect our user to the dashboard. So let's change the second button. Let's name it go to the dashboard. And like we did, we will add an action on click. Navigate to, you can choose an external URL or a page name and you choose between your different pages. We only have two. We'll select the dashboard. You can add additional parameters. Decide to open it in a new or in the same window. Let's keep the same. And that's it for a simple demo of a page from scratch. So let's go to our dashboard. Click on the button. It works. And now we know the basics. Let's understand how this page is working because it's really displaying data. So if we hover item, you can see their name. If you click on the left, you can see which one they are. But if you look on the right, currently it's using the inline JS to get some data. If we take all users, it's displaying utils. If you remember, utils is in our JS file get dashboard metrics dot data dot all user count. Let's go to JS utils and you can see get dashboard metrics. It's one of the function available and it's returning the data for the four label we have here. All users pending verified or blacklist. And what it does is it fetch all the data through get all KYC and then it's counting it in JS. In this context, get all KYC is a bit confusing because it's calling get all KYC from here, from utils, which is also calling 
the one that exists in the queries. They both have the same name. And what it does is an SQL request to select all the KYC ordered by the ID. You can run it and you can see the results on the bottom. Here it is. You can scroll and see all the values. So we have seen that queries, those are functions that are fetching our database and that are accessible in our JavaScript code. But the queries, the data they are using, it comes from the data section. Currently in our workspace, we only have one database, which is named sample database, and it's a Postgres database. You can hit the plus button to see that it is compatible with all the data that exists. Well, not necessarily, but because you can connect to a REST API or a GraphQL API, it becomes compatible with almost everything. But let's get back to the sample database. And because it is an example database, it is mixing the content for all the different templates. For our project, we are only using the KYC tables and KYC document. Here are the first data it gets from the database. And from it, you can directly generate a new page. And what it does is it create a page where it will display a table, a form to up add, update and delete. Perfect to have a starter app. Click on got it. You can see here we have a nice addition of our table. Ideal if you want to quickly create an admin dashboard for your users. Let's go back to the dashboard and let's go back to the UI. Currently, you can see that the data is fetched by default. And this is because in JS, if you go to the settings, you can check all the functions that you want to be called on page load. And to know everything you can do in JS and in the editor, you can check the documentation to see all the different global functions that you have at your disposal. For example, to clear intervals, to access data from the store, to download a file, there's a lot of built-in functions. You also have different guides to teach you how to code the proper way for AppSmith. Let's go back to our UI. And if we look at the daily registered users, you can see, like the text, the data it is using is coming from utils.returnChartType using the store from AppSmith, which is global data accessible everywhere. This is for the type, but also for the data here. In this case, the data is directly in the good format. But if we go to successful verification, you can see that it's directly in line that they coded the logic to return it in the right format with X and Y based on the month and the number of item. And if you click on the text, you can see a preview of the data. So it is an array with sample items with month, year and count. So it's what is used and it will return X and Y values. As a developer myself, I really like the approach they have to mix no code with code. Once you are happy with your application, you can press the play button to see it in action. You can scroll and use it. Here you can see we have this table. Uh, this user is pending, so let's verify it. There are documents, a passport. We can say if it's okay or not. We have this nice form. Let's say it is verified, approved, and we save the changes. And automatically, in the UI, our user will be updated. If you want to test it further, maybe you want to share it with your team, use the share button. You can copy the application URL, but let's try to open it in incognito window. Because we didn't publish it, we need to log in, don't have access to it, unless you are a team member with access to this project. Or what we can do is check make application public, then we reload here and we successfully arrive on the app. You can use your app as a standalone or also embed it into an existing website. You can decide to show or not the navigation bar, decide where you can embed it and you have a URL to use in an iframe. Let's get back to the editor. On the bottom left, you can see all the libraries that are installed for this project. Currently, it's not a lot. 
and you have the settings of your project where you can edit your application name currently it's kyc dashboard you can change different settings the icon the theme currently we have a blue theme but if we change the primary color to orange then you will see that here it's turning into orange you can also edit the appearance by choosing to display the navigation on the side to show or not a navigation bar you have nice control to make it customizable let's leave our project click on the AppSmith logo and on the top right click on the cog to open your instance settings from here you can customize your instance but you can see that to remove the AppSmith branding you will need to purchase a license it is not by default included in the free version if you are interested in their paid plan you can see that the business offer is also available in the self-hosted version thank you for watching we hope you enjoyed discovering appsmith with us please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews if you want to continue your open source journey watch this video available here